Hello and welcome to my morning note. Markets are still trying to digest what they heard from the Fed last week and perhaps some of the most interesting implications are for other central banks. Now in the case of the Bank of England here in London, it's an interesting juncture anyway because it's the last week of the governorship of Sir Mervyn King and next week we'll at last see the arrival of Mark Carney as the new governor. Does the change in tone from the Fed mean that we should change our expectations from Governor Carney? With me now to discuss this is our economics editor, Chris Giles. Chris, thanks very much for joining me once more. Let's start by taking a look at the uh, value of sterling, the, the foreign exchange market, since uh, Mark Carney's appointment was announced last November. This appears to show that uh, the market expected him to be very dovish at first and that they're dining back on that expectation at the moment. Yeah. Have they got it right there? I think they pretty much have it right. So what they've been doing is they've been listening to Mark Carney through mm. December, January and February. All the signs were he would come in and revolutionise mm policy at the Bank of England. He talked about a new remit, maybe even targeting nominal GDP. He didn't mention UK at the time, but the circumstances under which yeah. he said that might be needed sounded precisely like the UK's economic circumstances. He talked about getting using monetary policy to get escape velocity, and then it started to be dialed mm. back. Why, you see, the bottom is just about the time of the UK budget when the Chancellor gave the bank a new remit, but that was remarkably right. similar to the old remit because it's by then, people had thought about it and decided, well, we might tweak things at the edges, uh, but not go much further. So in terms of the policy space, it's very similar to the Bank of England that has existed for the last 15 years of independence. And I think the markets are right that we aren't going to see a sudden dramatic change. OK, now let's move on to the bond market, which is obviously the focus of, the, of attention at the moment. If you look at this, which compares gilts and treasury yields, it does sort of raise the issue how much independence of manoeuvre he has anyway if the Fed is changing direction. It does. So it certainly does. And as you can see, the gilt market has moved very closely in line with US treasury yields, even though policies haven't been the same. Mm. So it's clear that the Bank of England has the freedom to take a different policy stance, but it's not so clear that the gilt markets or gilt yields are going to move very differently to what's happening in the biggest bond markets out there in the world. So mm. if it's going to have an effect on the UK economy, it has to maybe do it through other channels. OK, now let's try to talk about uh, the reaction function. Normally, employment and the economy as a whole behave in much the same way. This recovery has been a very different one from its predecessors. How would you go about looking at looking at a uh, picture where GDP is still very depressed, but where in, uh, unemployment hasn't been as bad as in previous recessions? How do you go about gauging their reaction? Function? I mean, this is the most interesting chart I think mm. you can put up for the UK economy, and it's what American people who don't study the UK very closely often get wrong. They don't right. realise that we have not had the same sort of recession as the US or many other countries. Mm. In fact, it's been remarkably unusual. In the 80s and in the 90s, you saw GDP recovering really quite quickly, and in the 90s, extremely strongly, but employment lagged back right. and was still, five years later, well below the previous peak. This time around, GDP, or spending in the economy, has been very, very weak and continues to be weak, and yet jobs have grown, are now higher than they were in 2008, even though there's, some, there's more part-time going on, but actually employment has been remarkably strong. So we don't have the same unemployment problem. Now this means that what we are going to see from the Bank of England is probably some form of guidance, just like the Fed right. is doing some state contingent guidance is the buzzword. But we can't have exactly what the Fed's having, where you have an unemployment rate and then if it gets down to that, then you start taking away QE or raising right. interest rates. Because the relationship between employment and unemployment and the rest of the economy seems really weird in the UK. And so you wouldn't want to tie yourself to any of these things. And so is, that, is that why Carney was talking about nominal GDP at one point? I think, it, I think it is one of the things that we might well see the Bank of England. They're certainly going to think carefully about an intermediate target of nominal GDP because that's been so depressed in the UK and that really governs ultimately the fiscal situation and is very, very important for other reasons and our inflation has been distorted mm. by commodity prices and by essentially by tax rises going through the price level rather than through people's pay, pay packets. And so I think we might well see something like nominal GDP in there, so we'll see guidance, but not like the Fed does it. Thank you, Chris. I hope we've given you some greater clarity over what to expect from Mark Carney, but it's obvious that, that, that we will need to listen to his words particularly carefully and that perhaps the Feds isn't as good a guide for how he's going to act as you might think.